when it comes to the stock market, the the biggest uh, reference point that people use is the S and P five hundred. Right. The top five hundred companies right. in the U S. at a certain time. That number. Certain companies, you know, if you're lower down the list, sometimes you get in and out of that 500, but the ones at the top pretty much stay there forever. Mm-hmm. Apple, Microsoft, mm-hmm. General Motors, all these companies you've heard of are all in there. Out of all 500 companies, how many of them do you think have black CEOs? One had it. It was American Express. Okay. Is that, is that your guess? One? The correct answer is... is three. I, I, I called out, well, the reason I called out my man from American Express because he's also a frat brother, Q-Sci, Omega Sci-Fi. Uh, is he still? I'm not. No, he wasn't. But I remember when they started talking yeah. about black, move, black people, um, I almost said it like, well, who, where are they? Uh, Kenneth Frazier from Merck and Company, uh, Marvin Ellison from Lowe's, and oh, yeah. Roger Ferguson Jr. from TIAA. Yeah, I knew, I knew, uh, I knew Lowe's. It, it was funny. It was Lowe's, and then they were going out of business, right? It uh, um, used to be, remember, there was, the, there was a black CEO of uh, McDonald's mm-hmm. at one point, but they moved him around. Yeah. Three out of 500 is around half of 1%. Yeah, not the, even close the, to it. The black population in America is around 15%. Yeah, 13.6. 13.6, less than half of 1% is actually running these companies. Right, but we're make, but it's so funny, the blacks make all of the standard. It is the craziest thing, it is the standard in sports, in entertainment, in art, um, it's the standard. But it doesn't get to run the company that will know how to manipulate or to exploit that, that entity. Right, Michael Jordan is not one of the top shareholders of Nike. Nope. I saw a rundown, and he's not even on the list. in terms of the top shareholders. He's made a lot of money with them. They made a lot more with him. They made a lot more with him. Yeah. He is not one of the main owners of Nike at all. Which, which makes sense. It, you, the, you don't want any of the captives coming from, <laughs> coming from the cages to be up with the emperor. It's just not how it, how it works. Well, I interviewed Grant Cardone recently. Mm. You know who he is? Yes. Uh, and we talked about this, about how we both feel there's really no such thing as a middle class. Do you agree? It's, uh, it's not uh, financial inequality. It is educational inequality. Like, the, people are pay, playing by a completely different set of rules. You know, the intention, the intention of the poor is to pay the bills because somebody said, hey, you can't change your condition. It's not true. All you got to do is ask yourself a different question. Who has changed their condition in your community? No. This is a construct that's made for people to feel better about themselves. But the reality is, is that you either make enough money to invest your money where your money starts making money itself or you're on a hamster wheel where you're just paying your bills every month, which is what they consider the middle class. And they keep showing pictures of the 50s when the middle class was developed, right? Came back from the army, you come back in, you had a nice sleek car, you had a suit on, you put your briefcase down, you took your hat off. Your wife gave you a drink, you loosened your tie. <laughs> yeah, it was very Mary Tyler Moore. They, they positioned it just as the way it is. Um, I think this, I, and I say this, my daughter, Giovanna, now she and her videographer, she was like, I'm doing the music to his beats, his videos, and we're putting them out ourselves as singles. I said, I've been telling you this for 16 years. 16 years. I said, I remember when MIA came out. She didn't come out. Uh, just after Kanye. She'd been out. She was bubbling. She was dope. And yeah, and Kanye was like, yo, that's a dope piece right there. Then took the sample, but, and I'm an underground hip hop fan. You know who else is? Carmen Electra. Just thought I'd mention that. Okay. Uh, just, well, she was with Be Real. And so that kind of oh, puts you, you in a position. And I remember we were talking about it. 
Melissa Ford, another underground hip hop head. And when I told her, I said, this girl, M.I.A., you, she's on YouTube. She's on, you can check out her, uh, uh, what was it called? F not Facebook. What was the first one called? MySpace. MySpace, mm -hmm. her MySpace is the shit. <laughs> like, yo, you got to hear the Raheem Devine. If you want to do that R&B, you got to go this route. That, that's literally what I said. And she's starting to pick it up now as she's taking over the career. If you don't make your own money, you are going to be broke. If you don't develop something that you can do yourself, they're going to send it to China. If they can <laughs> export it and they can bring in Chinese goods, cool. But there's certain things you can't get. Can't get a haircut. Can't get your nails done. There's certain things that are never going to go away. They can't get rid of plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> they, can, they can move heating and electricity to solar, but they cannot move plumbing. So you better, you know, get you a plumbing company, man. Get you, you know, don't get a steel company. I remember my, my last year, man, in the, with um, the Pistons, I met this guy. He had a screw company, screw and bolts. Mm -hmm. And he was going to get me involved. This right after we won the championship. Everybody was grabbing one of us. And they grabbed Vinnie Johnson, too. But they was called Plastic Mold Injection Company. Man, but you want these screw and bolts. I went with the screw and bolt guy. Vinnie Johnson now runs a $300 million company called Piston Group on plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you go in the car, there's no more screws and bolts. Very few, but they use those plastic screws, that plastic molding. 